Space Place, episode number Space 82, Place. Regulations and Delegations. Ooh. Hey, y'all. <laughs> What's up, Chris? What's up? Oh, man. Well, we're getting started. We Everybody else is just not showing up tonight, so we're like, whatever. We'll just hang out. <laughs> Maybe dissect a frog or two. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we got the scalpel ready. Sharpen it. Right. Let's do it. <laughs> What's up, Raspy? Kyle should be here in just a few minutes, too. Yeah, Kyle, Kyle's coming in in a few, and I'm, and I'm sure some of the other guys will, will pop in over the night. But, um, yeah, tonight we're talking... Uh, regulations and delegations uh, a little follow-on from our last episode two weeks ago we we took a week off we had some, some stuff going on family family stuff going on and people were out touching grass and all that good stuff so we skipped a week uh, but we're back this week and looking at uh, looking at the delegations for the the SPO poll that happened and you know the the point behind the SPO poll was the SPOs kind of set their preferred parameter for K and their preferred um, parameter for, um, for min pool cost. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, ink spilled over that, that vote. There's tons of you know, people talking about what they thought was their best opinion of it and everything. And then the idea was, couple weeks of time for a delegation to move if they disagreed with their SPO. And uh, spoiler alert, there wasn't a whole lot of movement. <laughs> so <laughs> is what it is. Pe people pretty much stayed where they, where they were, uh, yeah. whether that, you know, whether it was they agree or disagree with the K parameter or whatever, I think a lot of that goes over the heads of a lot of our, of the delegates. I don't think that's something that they think that, that much about. And so I don't think there was, you know, while this was an important issue for SPOs to discuss, I don't think it went too far beyond that circle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most people like, I mean, everywhere you stake and everywhere I stake and everywhere, most people we know stake, we're staking there because we want to support those people. That's right. So we're not exactly. going to move. Yeah, exactly. I know I'm, I'm the stake pool I've been in. I've been mm -hmm. in for very, very long time. I had, I was with another stake pool before. Um, somebody that looked pretty cool, but then when I met the person that I'm staking with, I, you know, I, I'm there because I support their activity on the space, and that's yeah. so. You know, I want I want them to have whatever it is that helps them out and makes it you know makes it best. Yeah, for Let's sure. Do some shout outs here. We got uh, we got we got Raspy. Hey Raspy. We got Lord. Hey Lord, welcome. Good to see you, brother. Note takers here with penguin and a drip. We got Brian. Hey, Brian. Howdy. And uh, and CM's here. Thank you all for watching. We appreciate everybody that's, that's in tonight. And uh, hopefully, Chris and I don't bore you to absolute tears. <laughs> but uh, we'll we'll get started a little bit and, and and just chat a little bit on the the regulation side of things too, Chris, because this. A lot has happened since it's the been last a hell time. of a week, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. God. I was honestly expecting Kraken to get spotted on the day after oh. Binance, but it didn't happen yet. Yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was, you know, I, I'm, I was telling you earlier, I, you know, I'm interested in seeing this stuff that like the, uh, the, just what Coinbase actually has on Gensler. Um, I saw, I saw Mr. Wonderful Kevin, what, what is his name? Leary, yeah, yeah. Kevin Leary. Kevin Leary. You know, I saw him. He, he put out an article earlier today, and he was like, uh, he was like, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong should be fired because he didn't uh, he didn't go to the SEC and say, let's make a deal. Man. It's always been receipts, for two years. The, the receipts that Brian Armstrong has over the last two years of trying to make a deal with the SEC, it's like either Kevin wasn't paying attention or – you know, or he's, yeah. he's got a different, he's got a different take, right? He's got yeah. a different thing going on, a reason for, for saying what he's saying. 
So, and and with the the apparent news, the allegation, I guess, which is another interesting word that's being thrown around quite a bit the last few days, but um, with Binance, apparently, uh, Gensler wanted to be an advisor to Binance. I don't. We don't know the full story there yet. Full story, no, but it looks like there was some pretty good, you know, I would say there was some pretty good um, information that, that that did happen, that he did, you know, make overtures toward Armstrong and the, you know, and by, and, um, and Coinbase. Um, so it's, you know, or no, that was, so that was the Binance one. Yeah, CZ yeah. and Binance, yeah. He, right, he met CZ in Tokyo for yeah. that. One. That's what that one was. And, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, again, there's more receipts. Like, so this is a different company, different lawsuit, more receipts, more of the same kind of, yeah. Like huge, what, huge conflict of interest. Right. Exactly. Like, like, you know, does that disqualify him from even having these, you know, this enforcement action? I mean, I can't imagine what court wouldn't push a recusal. Yeah, I don't, you know, an ideological court <laughs> there, you know, it's yeah. the, that's the problem. That's what courts aren't supposed to be, but you know, we are where we are today. So, um, um now there was a, I'm quite certain it was a joke, but there was a, a tweet that went out today as breaking news that uh, SEC chair Gary Gensler was, he had dropped some Bitcoin shorts, you know, just prior to making these announcements. And, while we're quite sure that was a joke, it, it's interesting that just a few years ago, well, last year, uh, he was accused of market manipulation with Citadel. Yeah. Um, I don't know whatever became of that. I, it seems to be one of those things that got dusted under the rug. But that's just it. If you're if you're a regulator, if, you know if you've got the you know the job, the the crown of regulation, you know how do you get that job when you've been accused of market manipulation yeah like what's the yeah. you know what, what's the deal there what 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 allows that to happen nepotism right so. um let's see there was a there was there were several things that kind of popped out today mm -hmm. <clears throat> um there was one article the headline was u.s congress to sue sec and gary gensler and the quote was uh, from Representative Torres in uh, New York, allowing public listing, then blocking registration is indefensible. And, and one of the things he ended his tweet was, uh, Gary Gensler, expect to hear from Congress. Now, I read this article, and I don't see anything in here where there's any evidence of Congress actually hmm. leveraging to sue SEC, the SEC. Well, but, well, so, I mean, the way that, the way that works is that they they'll call the SEC before Congress, right? So they're they're a rulemaking body. So what they will do is they will they will issue subpoenas. You know, they'll make it to where um, they'll call the the they'll call the SEC before Congress, and they'll have to answer for it. And of course, they'll you know there will be very carefully rehearsed answers and. You know they're gonna try oh, yeah. to, to keep it moving along the way that they make it move, but but so after that last hearing that, he, that Gensler was in in front of Congress, it it appeared that the Congress was making moves to try to regulate this industry themselves. Well, yes, and so there may be there may be some pushback just because Congress is going to feel like their toes are being stepped on. Probably. Well, I, hate, I hate to say this. If you don't know this, that's actually Congress's job. True. <laughs> like, okay, this is a new industry. It does not work exactly the same as previous industries. So the agencies who are tasked to regulate previous industries may not be equipped to regulate this industry. That is a, that's a distinct real world possibility um they could be tasked to regulate this industry and tasked to regulate this industry in a specific way that's that respects its newness that's possible um so you, it, there could be a way where congress says sec you now rep regulate cryptocurrency if it looks like this this and this um and you have to follow these rules in order to do so 
that's actually, actually, if we had a functional Congress, that's what a functional Congress would do. Uh, yeah. What we've got is a bunch of infighting and craziness and, you know, and people not yeah, actually you know, moving balls forward for regulation and laws that we should have. Yeah. So because that is what happens and everybody's looking for their piece of the pie, their, their own, you know, whatever pork barrel or whatever you want to call it, you know, you know, approach to this, there, there's a lack of, of, of unified direction toward, Hey, let's do what's right for the people of the country. And, and so that's what we're stuck with. We're stuck with this, you know, with a, with a Congress that's not really capable of, of acting on its legislative responsibilities and a couple of agencies that think that they have some manner of responsibility over this because they think this new thing looks a lot like this old thing. And, and again, they're not entirely wrong, right? They're, they're at least partially right. That obviously is a financial derivative looks a lot like other financial derivatives that they regulate. So sure. there, but that's one of those things of, of uh, when you're a hammer, everything you see is a nail. Right. So what we're yep. looking at here with the SEC is, is we're looking at the idea that they're that they're the hammer and every cryptocurrency is a nail that they just got a nail into the wall. Um, and that's I, I mean, it, we've worked in this industry for how many years, man? I mean, it's you know, we know this isn't yep. the reality of the situation, but it's the reality of the situation when you don't have proper legislation in place. So so here we are. And. Congress has to act because if they don't act, we're going to be stuck with the SEC hammer nailing us all over the wall. Yeah. Right. So, so the good news is there's, there's people in Congress, both parties, we've got Democrats, we've got Republicans that, that both actually see legislation for regulating cryptocurrencies as a, as positive. And uh, I did read through the, the more recent one that's being proposed. Um, it actually took the CFTC and made a lot of cryptocurrencies uh, a form of commodities, but it gave a brand, for the first time yet, they have a brand new responsibility to the CFTC to regulate a new industry, the crypto industry. Um, and it's, it's not everything in crypto. But it's a it's a sizable chunk. It's and and it also had a bunch of protections in there. If you are a stake pool operator, a developer who develops code, a wallet producer, there was actual like definitions in there that made you a a defined class, right? And the whole thing with the defined class, the idea there is that that if you're it, like there was actually some rules before that were coming out that made it look like stake pool operators would be broker dealers, which they're not. Right. This is more like a stake pool operator looks <laughs> like this, acts like this. If you're a duck, you quack like a duck, you walk like a duck, right? That's <laughs> that's the idea, right? And so, um, you know, so those things are going on. And I see we got, uh, I want to say, hey, we got another hey to say. Hey, Steve, welcome in. What's up, Steve? And uh, so, you know, that's the that's the idea here is that that we're actually starting to say, well, that's a duck. We're starting to say that's a stake pool. That's a that's a wallet operator. And so they're getting they're kind of, you know, encoding in law what it means to have these other things so that you aren't accidentally lumped in with a broker dealer for uh, a security. Right. So it, it does. If that if that law passes, obviously it hasn't yet. You know, this is still something that's going through the, the sausage making machine of Congress. But if that law passes, now we actually have an identification of these roles within our space, and you can you can find, uh, you know, some you can find some solace, you can find some protection, you can find some safety from a, a Gary Gensler going after you for you know for building a wallet or you know or like writing a drip drops platform for instance you know the things that we do so right hey mark yeah good to see you hey mark good to see you man 
Yeah, there's 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 so there's so much nuance here and so many little little small details. And so much has happened, it's hard to keep track of it all. But um, you know, with, with Gary in particular, it's it's really interesting because you know, he he gave his MIT lectures, you know, a whole course, you know, on blockchain and, and blockchain security and you know that might be the scariest part of all this if you watch Gary Gensler from a few years back and you see how much he understands this industry, you can't now look at what he's doing today and say, Oh, he doesn't understand what he's doing. Right. No, no. Not only does he understand it's like surgical freaking precision, right? He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly where to go to, to try and harm the industry. And, and you can't look at it with another lens. You can't have a forgiving, oh, maybe it's just, no, you really, in this situation, you can't do it. Right. But, so, and, and just the sheer volume of contradictions between then and now, mm -hmm. you know, his, 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 what he's saying now directly opposes things he said just a few years ago. That's right. And, and one of them was three quarters of this industry are commodities. Well, that's not what he's saying now. And just yeah, today, right. he said crypto is nothing but fraudsters and hucksters, and scam artists. And yet, so, and yet, I know mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, brothers, sisters—you know—who work their butts off in this industry, who you know spend every day doing what's right, building something useful and beautiful for the world to have. You know, and are global, absolutely global. And paying their taxes. And paying their taxes. <laughs> Using their accountants, buying their groceries, being normal everyday citizens, and also working in this industry. And and definitely not fraudsters. I mean, I've run, we, you and I both, we've run into plenty of fraudsters in this industry. And yeah. then that's the other part is that most of us who are being legitimate in here are are actually like, you know, let's get rid of that guy. Let's find a way to expose that person and remove them from the space because they're harming all of us. Yeah. So we're over here self-policing with no good regulatory authority to, to self-police with and having to do it, you know, you know, basically Wild West justice and we don't even get the revolvers. Yeah. You know, now, it is what it is. Because of all this new uncertainty and this, this new shaky ground, some of the stuff that we're working on, we're having to kind of pause and that's right. Try to reassess yeah. our direction. And I'm hoping it's not pause. I mean, reassess definitely. I'm hoping it's not pause. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, a big chunk of what we're doing has relied on the the fact that we've we've you know asked for money transmitter licenses. Will we get them? Yeah. The exercise in paying for them has already happened. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> will we will we get will we get a positive answer? I have no idea. You know, that's definitely that's one angle of this. You know, obviously the fact that that is being painted with this broad brush, it's meant that that the you know the investment uh stuff that we're trying to do is definitely hampered. Yep. And on I'm the clarity, not... you know, the, reg the regulation uh you know, I guess clarity um itself. Um, which is something that we, you know, we want obviously to know yeah. what we, how we comply and how we do things the right way and all these things. Tell me the rules to follow. I'm not right. going to follow them. I'm going to follow them and I'm going to make sure that everything gets built so that it follows them. Absolutely. And, you know, looking at the situation with, with Coinbase and Binance and, you know, just y yesterday, Gensler said again on, on when he was doing his, you know, talk show circuit, um, so, you know, we've asked these people to, they know how to come into compliance. They just aren't willing to do it. Well, that's total bullshit. Total bullshit. Total bullshit. Well, again, there's the receipts for that. I know right. the receipts are there for that. That's what, so I, like, I'm hoping that what comes out of this is a degree of truth. You know, that this is, I mean, that's the thing about bringing somebody like Coinbase into this. You know, they are the 900 pound gorilla in the space. They yeah. do have the capital to, you know, to, to send every lawyer to fight. So, you know, if this is, I mean, you know, it, it, it feels a lot like, you know, Gensler's going to get picked up as a little knit off their shoulder and plucked, you know, yeah. like that's, that's it. It's not, you know, I don't, I don't see them losing here. They had, you know, he didn't come in with a strong case. No, not at all. And just today, uh, I guess it was yesterday, actually, 
Mm -hmm. Um, Robin Hood kind of joined sides with Coinbase and said, yeah, we tried to come in and register because the SEC wanted us to do it. And we came in, we spent all this time with them. And then they said, well, sorry, guys, uh, we can't, we can't really complete this. Right. And we can't really tell you how to complete it. And so now I'm wondering how many other big entities are going to come out and say, we've been trying to do the same thing. Right. The SEC, oh, they will. You know. Uh, uh, Caitlin, um, I forget her last name, the, the lady that was doing the, the, uh, Wyoming, the, yeah, the Wyoming, the bank, I'm forgetting her name right oh, now, but, uh, Caitlin Moss. Was, I'll, yeah, I'll take a look here. Let's Shane, we'll talk Shane, uh, said he'd wonder what it would take to fold some of these unelected positions into elected positions. People with that much power need to answer to us. Absolutely. Yeah. I think yeah. that, that's kind of that's one of the issues with the federal apparatus that we really have is you ultimately only have two. Uh, Kaylin Lang, thank yeah. you, Mark. Uh, <laughs> you only have you only really have two ways you elect your you you elect your congressperson, you elect your senator, and then you, or your senators. You get to elect both your senators, your one congressperson, and then you get to vote on the president and. Everything else is not an elected position. So, you know, we, we don't like, I just here in Florida, we, you know, we elect an attorney general, we elect a, uh, a commissioner of agriculture. We do certain positions. We just make them electable. It's not, it's not available in the constitution as of right now, but, you know, making more elected positions certainly feels like a good <laughs> A good pace. Yeah, uh, it is long. That's right. Taylor Taylor long. long. Yeah. yeah. Custodia Bank. Now that, now that <laughs> I got the name right, I remembered the bank. Custodia Bank. Uh, yeah. Like, obvious. Like, she really has the receipts, um, you know, put forth all the information. You know, she's obviously not being sued right now. She didn't. She, she's just being stymied. She's not been able to to bring her bank into the, uh, into the FedNow banking system. Well, it, her model makes too much sense. Of course it does. Her model actually would work. Now, the scary thing is for us, like one of the things in our model actually matches Caitlin Long's model. Like that was yeah. something that we made a conscious choice to do in our model. And so it's like, will that not be allowed to go through because of what's going on? We don't know, right? We don't, right. we don't know. You know, and we, you know, we got to see her speak um, at the summit in 2021 in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. Um Andrew and I, we were over in the main arena or whatever, and um, we caught wind that she was going to be talking over in the gymnasium. So me and him walked over and nice. and uh, and listened to her. And I think Charles was there, and the governor of Wyoming was there. But um, she gave a really, really, you know, uh, meaningful discuss you know, talk about you know the things she was working on and how you know where Wyoming was in blockchain in general. And right, um, but anyway. That's what's infuriating about this, right? Like, again, this isn't hucksters and, you know, and villains and all this, you know, the stuff that this broad brush that the whole industry is getting painted with. That's not what's here. You've got thoughtful people. You, you've you got yeah. intelligent, well-meaning, ready to ready to build a better industry people. And it's just like, you know... It's just ridiculous. Like you, you are, you just go in to follow the rules and it's like, no, you can't follow the rules because if you follow the rules, you'll win and we can't let you in here to follow the rules. It's insane. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. It, it goes against that whole idea that we are a, you know, we're a egalitarian capitalist society. It, it, it goes against it because ultimately we're not right now. We we're supposed to be. That's what yeah. we were. That's what our founding documents said we would be, kind of. But that's not what we ended up. What we ended up with is what we have, which is a protectionist, kind of authoritarian, you know. Yeah. And it it doesn't matter if the authoritarians left or right. It 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 doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's it's the people in charge telling you what you're going to be and what you're going to do, and and you manage to squeak by with whatever they leave over for you, and that's. You know, that's not egalitarian. That's that is definitely, you know, 
it's definitely not libertarian or you know that's right li you know liberty based um, lord says kraken is a shell of a former of its former self i Maybe. agree with that i agree with that to an extent i you know i you know i don't the the heat's not there anymore yeah i'm a big fan of kraken i've been using mm -hmm. them for quite a while now it's I just use really too. yeah it's really easy they got, got a nice platform I was a big Coinbase user for many years and had some issues with deposits and withdrawals and stuff and went back and forth so many times with our customer service and finally got aggravated and said to hell with this. Um, but as it stands right now with everything going on, I'm definitely in Coinbase's corner. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to use their services just for personal reasons, but I'm definitely going to support them on, on this journey. Right on. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I, I actually have both. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I still I, have the other one. I just don't really yeah, use it. I've got both. Uh, I do like Coinbase's credit card that you can yeah. spend crypto with. I think that's a really cool feature. I like having that. And I use that. I need yeah. to do that, actually. Yeah, it's I had nice. the shift card when they did that. And then when mm -hmm. they, they, they stopped using that service, whatever that provider was, mm -hmm. and they changed their system. And that's kind of when I stopped using them. It was like in that middle spot. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I, you know, it was, it was really neat when I got the card. I've always thought it was a cool ability, you know. Yeah. And for my little bit of, of personal stuff that I do, that's what I use as my as my Coinbase. And, um, but yeah, for you know, for our business, we had established the Kraken. They had that. They had the ability to KYB for the business, and to be able to have the you know the business account there. Yeah. It's a, it's you know, it's remarkable. It's a great tool to have. It's a you know, it's use. You, usable way to to actually run a business and actually have crypto you know yeah so like that was why that was why we went that route when we had the opportunity so. i don't know if any of you guys uh, and gals in the chat um watching this whatever platform you might be on if you have seen any word from other uh congressmen and women senators representatives what have you any comments from them about the sec stuff going on right now um I, we've seen the one from uh representative torres in, in new york but i don't i haven't really seen anything from anybody else yet that doesn't mean it hasn't happened i just haven't seen it but if anybody has seen anything uh please share it with us so we can we can check it out yeah for sure <clears throat> like to, like stay on 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 point with that stuff best i can because I'm guessing there's going to be a pretty swift reaction from Congress, but I could be very wrong about that. Um, we we had a in one of our internal meetings earlier today. We kind of discussed it briefly, but what do you, what do you think the reaction from Congress is going to be? Well, I mean, from what I've seen so far, you know, we we've seen the you know kind of the call calling you before Congress thing, which I believe is a good thing. Um, the legislation's moving forward. I think I think that combination's a good one. Um, I I think that if they can find their footing, <laughs> you know, this is one of those yeah. things that could be a bipartisan issue and both parties are looking for bipartisan wins right now. We're going into a presidential election season. So everybody wants everybody to win so we can go, you know, into a good presidential season. So, um, so, but you know, my, my hope is that, that they do, that I, my hope is that Congress has to act like it, it, it chooses to act. I mean, we could tell them, Chris, what we were talking. One of the things we talked about today is the very real possibility of simply having to sell the drip drops properties to an overseas entity and being done with it. Yeah. Like it's a real possibility. If this doesn't, if we, we created an American company, followed American rules, knowing that that was our, that was our need. That was, you know, our desire was to, to follow the rules and be an organization that, that, that did it by, you know, did the right thing by the rules. And then when the rules don't even materialize and you're on shifting sands because the rules won't be made, what choice yeah. do you have? You sell out, you know, you go, you, you let the foreign entity buy you out. Yeah. Like, because they can run the operation. They can continue the, the business, even if you can't in the States. Yeah. Um, that's a good question, Steve. Yeah. Thanks. For putting that up. Yeah. You know, that's, that's an interesting take because you, you know, we do as citizens have redress, 
you know, rights to redress the government, right? Mm -hmm. So SEC is a government um, organization, so we we have the right to redress our government. And then, um, and then um, we got. Let's see. Brian here was asking the question: Can you start a new location of Bra's new headquarters? No, unfortunately, we cannot. We cannot just start a new location abroad. We we'd have to sell the assets. The the assets would have to. We'd have yeah, to. It had to be a transfer. Yeah. yeah, we'd have to close. It's not. It's not a. If you start something overseas, you're still here. Effectively, you're in, in both places. So if they can't give us regulatory clarity, no, we can't go that route. Yo, are we talking about the week? Hey, Kyle. Yeah, we're talking about the week, man. <laughs> right. We talk. About the week. Yes, we are. Welcome aboard, man. <laughs> I sorry I'm late. That's cool. That's okay. I love you both. <laughs> Thank well, you. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you two take over here for a minute, and I'm gonna be back in just just about three to five minutes. I'm okay. to get a snack. That's what, I need a snack. snack time. Right back, <laughs> no, I got y'all. <clears throat> but we had um uh Daniel Friedman, Danny. Um, he was on uh, the Adoja Twitter channel. Uh, day before yesterday, I, I like I like that motherfucker a lot. I love Danny. I had, I had the privilege of buying him and Hosky dinner in Austin at a rustic fucking picnic table with some other dudes who were there. Who uh, I don't I don't remember exactly who they were, but they you know they were there for the fucking purpose. But like. Mr. Freeman's a real motherfucker, and he's, oh yeah, and he's gonna make a goddamn fucking impact. What I, I think, what I like the most about him is that he's a hilarious. You know, he just he has fun. He has like a, a great personality. Well, but yeah, also, yeah, yeah, but that that that's so common. It, it, but the underlying facet is his his game for humanity is so goddamn visceral and yeah. potent. Like that that's a real motherfucker in my book. He is going to change the fucking world. Yeah. Well, under the right circumstances. Now don't get me wrong, that, that may or may not have anything to do with what he brings to the table, but when you have a hundred and fifty Daniel Freemans coming to the table, something's gonna happen. The world changes. Yeah, yeah. that's all I'm saying. Set. Yeah. So in this uh in this the, the most recent or the SEC filing, uh, I think it was the one related to Coinbase. It may have been Binance. I can't remember which now. But. At some point, they're all fucking retarded. Yeah, but they, they they named ADA as as one of the tokens that were at, was a security, and they which they obviously have done no due diligence on what Cardano is. The how lawsuit the, how the Binance. Well, no, it, it was the lawsuit against Binance is where they pegged it. Okay, and and, and the and the arguable due diligence they did were were based specifically on io statements and what i thought was funny is that were is that they were statements around march of 2021 and if you remembered what happened in march of 2021 march 2nd of 2021 technically the mary hard for well it was early march 4th but early March 1st is what when Mary happened but or late March 1st is when Mary happened but a few hours later March 2nd turned and space coins were minted right and we didn't give two fucks about IO we were promoting <laughs> it likely before IO and so like Gary you want to bring the goddamn heat fucking pull us out of the goddamn dirt we'll bury you kid <laughs> I'm, I'm not fucking around I'm done with this bullshit I'm done with fucking everybody with their dick in their hand thinking they think they can find product market fit well yep. by, by the SEC's definition and, and how they labeled ADA security almost anybody who's ever had anything funded by Catalyst is a part of that oh I also of that hope it's not even funny and, yeah. it's, and, and the way they've been handling the money and shit, if if it were public, how they're handling it right now, they get buried. That's a fact, a fucking fact, hands down. Now we don't need to fucking go and shake the tree. It is what it is. We'll fly under the radar. Let's go do what we need to do. 
Right. But let's not fucking mistake one goddamn second. We don't know what the fuck's happening. And let's not check anybody. We allow it to happen as a community. Yeah. So, but it's necessary. We have to fucking get funded through the fucking edge. And yep. it, it's either this ecosystem or the next. But the problem is, is IO standing in the way. Now, I don't believe they're standing in the way, like as, as this categor, categor, category, you know, this category, cat, blah, 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 fucking big word. I can't talk right now. <laughs> as this fucking. I don't see it as a bad thing. I see IO having a very delicate position of working to do what they need to do to position themselves as just another community participant. That's right. right? Yes. hundred percent. Absolutely. And, and, it, and it's super challenging. And I totally understand how magnificent those challenges are relevant to how io has come into the space as a leader versus how they need to proceed moving forward i totally get it it's not ideal it's not going to be easy but that being said balance of power is coming yep. who is going to rise to balance that power there have to be other what do you call it uh, um there's a word for it a uh, competent well, yeah Com <laughs> competent that's, peers, that, that's the peers base in the space right but really ultimately that's it right it's competent like peer, peers competent peers yeah. say competent peers i think that's a reasonable i mean it's a, it's a new word we haven't defined it yet what does it mean i'm not trying to be snarky but i want to look if you're going to go to war and you get three motherfuckers to cover your back i want the two motherfuckers you pick to be worth a shit that's all you know right. like you know it's it's a yeah but this is serious shit now the game's changed we have 100,000, 150,000 more participants than we had before in the last bear market. And the majority of them don't even fucking understand why we're here. They understand why they're here and they think they understand why they're here, but they don't understand that the reasons why we're here will take or could take everything they fucking think they believe in away from them with how they put their fucking finances down. This isn't a game. I didn't come to lose. You didn't come to lose. Nope. I didn't come to fucking just make money either. I can make money fucking feeding cows to some dingbat on the fucking road and live and feed my baby. There's so yeah. many industries that are easier to make money in right now. Than oh, a oh, hundred thousand <laughs> percent. I could go back to my old job tomorrow. It would be so much easier. <laughs> I'm here for purpose. It's a purpose. Exactly. We came here because we were inspired. That's right. Well, not not just that. It's because each of us knew something deep, deep, deep down was worthy. Yeah. And then when you right. put it in the right environment, you can exercise it. And I don't give a fuck what anybody says. They don't know. And because they don't know, they either fucking ignorant or they're jealous. One or the other. You cannot fuck with what we found. Now, that being said, it's on us to fucking put it to purpose. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But if if anybody wants to hear um Danny's Danny's thoughts on the SEC, which I thought were great, and and these filings, these these latest, latest filings, go to the Adoja Twitter, listen to that, listen to him talk. Um, Can and the you, reason I think it's important to get his perspective on it is because when the when the eight when the I keep saying Adoja when when Cardano launched its ICO, he was the one running that. He he handled most of that. Process. What do you mean? You know, all the legal shit with the Japanese government. With the, was it the FS, FSMA? You I mean when when, the when, when 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 <clears throat> when Cardano did their their token sale? Danny before? was. Work, I didn't. I didn't yeah. know Danny was working for IO at that point. I yeah, thought yeah, he was one of the very very first uh, uh, permanent employees at at uh, IO. That's up, fucking, that's time. news to me. Fucking yeah. props to Danny. Like, I just saw him show up as a stake pool operator, Faye, <laughs> ITN when shit was picking up. And I thought he got picked up by IO based on the game he brought during that. Now, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like, the game he brought, like, it was so hard. I was suspicious. I thought he was a government agent. It was so 
No, like seriously, it was that <laughs> goddamn good and fucking attentive. Yeah. Like, like you know, I mean, uh, I'd be, I, you, you guys would fire me if I didn't suspect that firsthand, right? Like. He he brought that level, and him and I butted heads on you know because I'm I'm totally far from perfect and you know whatever. And but he really brought value then and there. And there was only two people during the ITN who got my attention like that, and it was Danny Raybar and Adam Dean, and I didn't trust either one of them. <laughs> well, I'm talking about uh, I'm talking about Daniel Friedman. Oh, Dan, Big Dan. Tall Danny. Oh, okay. I probably shouldn't call him Danny because everybody calls Danny right. Ry- Daniel Rybar. All right, Ryan. all right. I love you, Danny. Daniel. Danny did solid. Yes, Danny showed up in the ITN and showed the whole Cardano community what Danny was about. Yes, Danny, we love you. That's where I was coming yep. from with that. Okay, okay. All right, I'm with you, Chris. <laughs> but um, but essentially, what happened during the uh, during that that sale, the Cardano ICO or whatever you want to call it. You know, people bought vouchers for ADA with Bitcoin. And then that's what they were investing in was the vouchers to get ADA later. Well, they got their ADA when, when you know, the protocol went to mainnet. We lost Kyle. Yeah. <clears throat> and Oops. like Andrew said a few days ago, nobody has any more claim to IO anything. Or a Murgo or CF or whatever, you know. Right. That's, that's a done deal. But that was all done in in complete compliance with Japanese law on Japanese soil. Only only people in Taiwan, North, excuse me, South Korea, I think, uh, Japan, a, a few you know Asian countries, uh, Asian nations. Um, but no United States. Danny, you know, Daniel himself couldn't even participate, mm-hmm. and he was the one who was setting it up. But he's an American, you know, Ameri- he's from the Ukraine, but I mean, he's an American citizen. You're talking about Friedman. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm just kind of, I guess I'm sort of hung up on the fact that no. they, they, they called good, ADA they security that pisses me right. off. <laughs> Look, they had good they, legal advice. They, they, they called all of our businesses illegitimate. No. It wasn't just calling ADA se- a security. They took a stab at everything. Everybody here, legitimate, has fucking stood up to fucking fight against. Right. And I get it. I get it. You know what? We got the mean coin shit going on. Congratulations. I'm so glad if y'all made some money. Congratulations. <laughs> it's the last shit you're going to get before you get left behind. Because because product market fit's coming, and we don't give a fuck about your game. Because your game's not fucking scalable. Period. <clears throat> now the product, the the products will find the space. We're building them. Well, We're building several of them. <laughs> we have to pivot, and we got to yeah. go hard for it. We have to go. It's the last week has changed everything, and that's fine. We're fine. We have runway. We got motivated team members. We went with goddamn 90 days and turned it to a quarter million revenue with our first fucking hook. Mm-hmm. We can do it again. And we have to do it again. Yep. But in a declining market against yep. different odds. What's up, nudes? What's up, hey, nudes? Is nudes going? <laughs> Yeah, what's up, dudes? What's up, dudes? <laughs> what's going on? You want to come hang out, fucking DRP? Yeah, come hang out with us, homie. We can talk about riots and all kinds of cool shit. <laughs> um, I think what the one mistake I, I know I want to harp on personal mistakes, but if I if I had a time machine, I'd go back a little over a year ago, and instead of buying a house, I would have bought a camper. Not would not you? even kidding. Not even kidding. Really? Yeah. Or an RV, one of the two. I bought a Ducati, man, and it's it ain't working. Out. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a do party. Yeah. I'm working on it. It'll be all right. In two weeks. Look, hey, I'm gonna get it back to 140. But whether or not I come back alive, will be in a whole another game. 
I just I'm just thinking now how much fun it would be because I could get Starlink on an RV or whatever and just just be anywhere, you know. That's, yeah, Mel, Melanie, and I've talked about that for years now, man. That's just something like the dogs can go with us, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, we got one life, man. It ain't worth this bullshit. Like, no, don't get me wrong. Like, it's so awesome coming together with so many great people to work with and just being like, hey, I got a great idea, but all these guys got great ideas too. And now you put it together and it's like, it's another animal. Like, it looks like we have too many irons in the fire sometimes. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, that's the shit that I, I mean, like when I die, like that's the shit that's gonna make me feel like I fucking did it right. Yeah, you're right. right? Like, like the moments of like, hey, when could you have given your life force for a greater purpose, a meaningful fucking purpose to a better fucking group of talent? That's how I see it. And yeah, yeah, we don't always disagree. There's gonna be days that we feel like we wasted. There's gonna be shit that we fucking got to do for each other that we don't want to fucking do. We don't always disagree. Not sometimes, all. sometimes we agree. We <laughs> rarely disagree. <laughs> you know, like when it comes full circle, like, yeah. yes, like, no, it's not about disagreeing. It's about seeing perspective and growing as fucking men. Yeah. God damn, y'all have seen shit I've never seen before. And I've seen shit y'all have never seen before. And we bring it together and it's like, okay, let's just look at the world and how we perceive it. And, and to anybody watching who, who may think we're full of shit, find your people. And don't ask permission. Don't ask anybody's fucking permission. And the people that bitch and talk about you behind the scenes. I'm not losing echoes. any kind of sleep. No. Yeah, those echoes get <laughs> far, far distant the further you move away. Uh-huh. So. If I lose sleep, it's because my back hurts. That's it. Yeah. Oh, it's going to get so nasty. Yeah. They're going to figure out how to send you a text message at 4 a.m., Chris. <laughs> I don't have a phone. My phone's broken. They're they going to find it. They're going to figure out a way to send a dildo to your fucking two inches from your face. <laughs> <laughs> CM was asking if a doge is reg- registered in the U.S. as well. And as yes. of right now, it is. It's yeah, we are. Uh, we are. We are looking at moving that entity overseas, too. We have to. We have to take it overseas. Um yeah. This week, this week, like, like we really wanted to be a stand up, um, set precedent type of initiative. And yeah. right now, while we still are positioned to do that very well, we can, I, we cannot risk losing any more talent due to the fucking bureaucracy. That's right. And, and, and that's where it's at. So like our, our, our position and it's, it's not just the doja. Yeah. There's a little bit of an in- interminglement because there's, there's some common resources to the team, but you know, from our perspective, the reality is, is we have to keep the talent engaged period because the talent we're all, we're all our own human life forces. We can do whatever the fuck we want with every breath we have. And in, you know, doing the best we can as an initiative to maintain the opportunity to the, to the people we, you know, attracted to the opportunity um, or the initiative, if you will. Um, it, 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 it's important because the incentives, incentives have to hold post incentive phase. And so, um, yeah, we're learning shit with a doja. It's, it's definitely ahead of its time. It ultimately needs to thrive on a side chain, I think. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, that's right. Um, sure. You know, and so, sure, we could do things a certain way and rock a doja out and fuck Cardano up and fucking use our lever. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have drop raiders. It's a total, it, it is a unfair fucking advantage for anybody who understands what that really is. And it doesn't make sense to leverage that on a main chain init unless it's the fucking init to bring God all product market fit. But yet that's another lever. Right. And and that's really who's playing here. Who can bring the most users? Whoever fucking brings the most users wins the game. Right. Look, ar- architecturally, side mm-hmm. chains off of a main chain make a lot of sense. And something like a Doja as a side chain. A, Nearly every D app 
that has been specified up to this point makes sense as a side chain off the yeah, main chain. Nearly absolutely. every one of them. Um, Dexes are better as like a, a layer two, the Hydra type stuff where they where they just have that fast finality and that kind of you know that kind of stuff. Like that's better for the Dexes, but D apps D apps as a as a side chain just make a ton of sense and obviously we're gonna everybody's gonna see that we're gonna do a whole bunch more of that over this next year that's one of the many things that we're gonna be putting out over this next year or so um yeah. but yeah adoja is gonna be phenomenal as a side chain it's gonna be one of those tools that it can scale as large as it needs to and the main chain secures everything <clears throat> don't worry really about that. That. I, I agree with that we have to tweak it right in the middle and finesse and find that product market fit with the real world and yep. once we start to ignite that spark we kindle it and and fire it so and exactly and it in that that side chain idea gives it that infinite scalability that it needs it, it, and that's the point. And so people looking at the chain and people coming to build on the chain, they don't understand what that scalability entails right. and how to build business models around needing to be able to scale in that manner. And that's things we're thinking about today, um, where quite frankly, we might not ever need catalyst permission ever again to bring 100 million users to the space, nor their knowledge that they're fucking rolling on cardano which right. puts so much traffic on the fucking chain that all y'all fucking clowns fucking running in mouths that want to run shit got to step up your fucking game he said it we didn't he said it we didn't i fucking said, <laughs> God damn, I fucking said it you guys let me run my mouth for hey 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 fire me at any fucking time <laughs> let's go <clears throat> Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I think in the, in the future and probably not too far away, you know, I think the majority of transactions on the main chain are going to be peer to peer transactions. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so it's like what we're building here right. doing final, you know, final settlements on yeah, the settlement chain. transactions. That's exactly. No, no, that's no, what makes no. sense. The majority of tra transactions aren't going to be peer to peer. They're going to be a goddamn service providing a fucking service on behalf of a customer that doesn't give two fucking shits about Cardano. <clears throat> they don't even know what Cardano is. That's right. That that that's the fucking volume, and it's easy. We've already we've we've established internally one model for that already, which makes absolute sense. No period. question. Yeah. Period. 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 And now now whether we get to build it on our own and we leverage the ecosystem to do it, I mean it's self. It's one of those things where it's a killer rat, where it brings so much volume that all the ecosystem participants really don't have a fucking means to participate unless they fucking don't have a model that, or excuse me, unless they have a model that relies on, you know, how UTXO works. And, and most of them don't. They've got this finality model. They tried to take some shit from some other chain thinking it's fucking cool. Let's replicate it here. We're, we're, the best, we're the best in the world at what we do, guys. Yeah, I mean, that, it is true. A lot of things that are on card now are, are, are replications, if we're being honest with ourselves. Our it's, all, it's all replication. The whole goddamn ecosystem's <laughs> replication. Everybody here has shown up because they think they can make more money just by knowing what the fuck this in industry is. Okay, cool. I get it. You want to fucking drip? Cool. You're damn right. Get your fucking tokens. They may be worth something. You want to fucking play DJ games on a Dex? Cool. You can play ahead. You want to buy fucking NFT? Sure, you can get fucking ahead. You want to trade some shit? You might be able to get some shit. But I'll tell you what. None of you motherfuckers, not a single one of you motherfuckers uses this space to actually improve your fucking lives other than what the fuck you can talk about your magic internet money people to the fucking people you fucking talk to. And don't get me wrong, it's magic internet money until it's not. I get that part of it. I'm, <laughs> right. not, I'm, not, I'm not seeing <laughs> on that game of it. All I'm saying is, is that if you're here just to take, you're taking from somebody. And if you're not giving and building, it's not sustainable. And if the given yeah. bill doesn't outmatch the propensity of fucking idiots who don't have anything better to do with their game than to come to this ecosystem and extract from it, it's going to fail. 
Now, it's just a net fucking positive. Don't get me wrong. For every 10,000 of you fucking retards that don't know anything better to do than to buy an FT and fucking jack off with your dick in your hand, there's going to be one or two fucking kids who show up who can really change the world. You know, Patrick Tobler did a really, he took a really good shot at it. Kid came out, young kid, young gentleman, fucking said, I'm going to make a fucking play. He did the best he fucking could. And he's I'm still doing it. Well, he is. Absolutely, he's doing it. But I'm disappointed in the fucking rest of the entrepreneurs who showed up. Now, don't get me wrong. You watch the decks. You got to. That's cool. I get that. But there's a subclass of entrepreneur. And, and I hate to say it, but it's pretty much the whole NFT ecosystem here. Yeah, 99.999% I mean, of the shit. That's uh, I am, is I'm, the, I'm happy to leave it all behind. Yeah. I'm happy to I'm happy to hit product market fit and leave it behind. Because there's stuff like go like go keys, you know, uh, you know, real estate, fractional ownership, that kind of stuff. It hasn't even happened yet, but it's right. there. You yeah. know, the potential right. is is there. Right. There's lots of use cases for NFTs way beyond pictures of monkeys. No, 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 and I get it. And um that's one thing that annoys me about Bitcoin now, too, is like it's it's almost fucking useless. You can't send yourself a transaction and get it within four, four hours because of this all this ordinal shit. And I, it's cool. It's well, novel. Well, well, yeah, but, but Does that like, need to be strapped on to Bitcoin? These idiots who show up who fucking don't have any other fucking viable game to bring. Like, I got this kid Esco fucking trashing me on Twitter spaces who likes to use words like value prop. And I have great business experience. And the fact is, you've got great business experience and you've been here two years. And you're still not driving transaction volume. What's you know, your value prop? You're a fucking moron. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Like, we're not even so fucking prop. game, kid. Yeah, but it goes back to the replication thing. It's like just because you can do it here doesn't mean you really need to. Like well, the, the, the thing with the ordinal stuff. No, it doesn't, do it, it doesn't matter. Really it doesn't matter. It does not matter. The product market fit that old <laughs> they fought will not move forward to the game that we put forward. We're gonna well, leave that's, it behind. That's, that's that's apparently true, right? That, like that's really? that's true on the face because if it were to have done that, it would have already done it. Yeah, they that's did true. not fucking find product market fit. Nobody fucking has. This is no. what I say all the fucking time. No yeah. one's nailed it. Now I believe we figured out how to nail it. I, I think you're right. But even even to this point, drip drops drip drops fit the market that was here. But drip drops did not break outside of the market that was coming. Goddamn right. right. Well, what is that? Oh, drip drops fucking played in the fucking pond or the fucking we, shit. We, Let's we, go we jumped in the pond ocean. and the pond loved us. But let, yeah, exactly. Now, how do we well, go? We grew into the fucking sharks. So let's go show those motherfuckers who the fuck we are. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there are, there are, there are. Let's feed. That's what we do. Let's fucking feed. I'm still here. We're still here. There, there are several platforms building right now on Cardano that I think that have an opportunity to get their own brand of product market fit too. I think Noom is one of them. I think you're right with Noom. It's just ahead of its time. I, I love think... Noom, and I love the the people and the and everything behind Noom. My my, I was asked to be the CTO of Noom, and I said I wasn't qualified. I was the first person Ryan asked. And I told him straight up, I wasn't qualified. I got other shit to handle. I love you, but I can't do it. And he, and, and he found a, a much fucking Andrew, absolutely fucking super qualified, right? Like, come on, I'm not, I'm not a CTO. Right. We know that, right? Right. <laughs> um, Andrew's king. We know. N n yes. Yeah. A Andrew, Andrew's fucking got, Andrew can pull a haymaker. Like, I, I want Andrew on my six for sure. Um, we all do. But my, my issue with Noom is, is the same issue with drip drops is the same issue with any business in our space. You got to onboard all those fuckers and they're all retarded. They don't care. They don't give a fuck about what we do. They, when you start to talk about the value prop of being your own bank and you get to any fucking tangible asset, they don't get it. They think everything they do is going to be available. Nobody gets it until you, absolutely need to understand it yeah. it's, it's any lessening life you leave your partner you don't get it till it hurts you see what i'm saying you fucking you do something in business 
you don't get it till it costs you fucking money, right? Like right. make a decision today. Oh, maybe we don't understand it till six months later till we fucking lost fifty percent of revenue. Like we the, knew the we internet did not take off until people no longer needed to understand the internet in order to use the internet. Exactly, that that, and that's the, that's, that's the hurdle. That's that's the technical technological challenge is yep. developing our processes to a point where they're. Invisible. No, it's, it's not about processes. Bring a fucking value prop that makes a user fucking use your product so blindly they don't give a fuck about the channel they're using it. Right. Like people didn't fucking say I'm using the internet. Duh, duh, duh. They said I'm gonna right. fucking talk to grandma. So exactly something that really excited really them, grandma. something that entertained them, something that educated them. Those so, you know, those are things that they're looking that people are looking for they don't care about nfts they don't care about blockchain they don't even care about immutability they might care about other things that have to do with those oh, I think things, they care right? about immutability, but i don't think they know what they mean they, they, that's right exactly they care about the, what that means and what it can mean for them because god damn it i promise you we can get a fucking every american to spend 250 dollars or a thousand dollars on immutability we can and, 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 and i think means, we will <laughs> yeah all that means guys is that um if you ever have something you want to persist for all of time longer than after you're gone forever we got you for that so no one got you covered to, that's all you know we're not gonna lay any two haymakers but the point no. of that shit is we don't need a goddamn shit from anybody in this ecosystem to sell the world on what they want that's right and on that note, guys, we've been just over an hour here today. Wait, 30 minutes for cut out. Well, we, we're going to shut this down before we go too far. Love y'all. <laughs> thanks, thanks for hanging out tonight. This was Space Place episode number 82, Regulations Wait, can, and Delegation. Can we talk about Gary? Fuck you, Gary. Didn't talk you about yes. Gary. Hey, Gary, Gary. Gary, just for Fuck the you, Gary. Up. This one's for you, <laughs> fucking you cupcake. Fucking watch us roll the fuck out. You motherfucker. Send us overseas. Tie, like, untie my fucking hand. Let's go. Yeah. Good night, y'all. <laughs>